But before we start, before we move down to the dungeon, I'll give you a brief history about the castle and the slave trade. The Cape Coast Castle was built by the British around 1665. The castle is 351 years old. And this castle was built purposely for the transatlantic slave trade. So for close to 200 years, the British were using the castle as a transit point with many Africans taken from here to the Americas, the Caribbeans, and enslaved to work on plantation farms. The Africans taken away by the British during the slave trade, majority of them were captured within present day Ghana. Mm -hmm. But there were some Africans captured in neighboring West African countries like Togo, Benin, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Nigeria, and brought to the castle. And most of these Africans were prisoners of intertribal wars. Mm. Some were also kidnapped from their villages by slave raiders. And wherever these Africans were captured, they walked to the castle. They were brought here by middlemen and slave raiders to be sold or auctioned to the British. However, the British traders did not use money or currency to buy or acquire the captives. The British were using imported goods like guns, gunpowder, textiles, mirrors, tobacco to exchange for the captives. And after they get their captives from the middlemen, some of the British traders branded their captives. They had these branded irons with their company's names or symbols or emblems engraved at the tops. The irons are put into fire. Very hot, they are taken out stamped on the captives. The hand or the back. And the branding was done for easy identification. And after they brand the captive, they would then separate them. The middle dungeon, uh, the British could keep in as many as 1,000 wow. male captives in the middle dungeon. Uh, the females had a separate dungeon. We will go there. And in the dungeons, they will keep the captives in for between two weeks to three months to wait for the slave ships to arrive from Europe. In North America, the British took the captives mostly to the US the Caribbeans to the likes of Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas. And over there, the British were selling the captives to plantation owners for profits. The plantation owners then used the captives as labor on the sugar, cotton, coffee plantations. The transatlantic slave trade was officially abolished in Britain in the year 1807. However, the British traders who were trading in this castle they did not stop in 1807. The British in the castle continued taking away captives until 1833, when the British government abolished slavery in British West Africa. I'll pause here for a second. Any question before we move into the male dungeon? The British were not the only Europeans involved here. Uh, the slave trade was basically started by the Portuguese. Yeah, the Portuguese were the first Europeans to arrive on the coast of West Africa. And they also arrived in Ghana around 1471. They built the first slave castle, Alimina Castle, mm. in 1482. And there's one castle also in the capital city, the Christian Castle, built by the Danish around 1661. So the Portuguese, uh, the French, the Swedish, the Dutch, the Danes, the Germans were all involved in the slave trade. <laughs> Uh, this is the second chamber, and also the biggest. This chamber could hold as many as 250 captives all the way to the main gate. And the 250 men had one vent, just a single hole for light and ventilation. Now, I want us all to take a look up there. Uh, we can see an opening. Yeah. It was an observatory, and each chamber had one. Uh, during the slave trade, occasionally, the British would order some of their soldiers to come and sit or squat there with torches or lanterns. What the soldiers had to do is to observe the captives, just to ensure that everything <coughs> is under control. So that was uh, an observatory or a spy hole during the slave trade. So you can see a room with the windows closed. Yeah. Sorry, the windows open. open. Yeah, it was an Anglican church during the slave trade. 
So the British, whilst captives were down there, they were washing up there. Mm. It is now a children's life. School kids come around. Now a life. And in 2009, President Obama visited the castle with his family. And this was unveiled in, in his honor. Uh, the wife, Michelle Obama, is a descendant of captives. And Michelle believes her ancestors were taken from Ghana to the US wow. during the slave trade. So she traces her ancestry back to Ghana. That is why the family came around to visit. And this on uh, 11th of July 2000, uh, a punishment cell. So this, this was the female punishment cell. Uh, the women, the female captives in the female dungeons, some of them were seen as rebellious. The women who were resistant, raped by the traders or trying to escape from the castle, they were locked in here. And uh, a woman could be in for about three days. When she's in, she eats once a day from the palms. So the idea was to starve the woman, to break her spirits, and also to use her set an example. And there could be as many as 10 women locked in a cell. The outlets down here was for waste, toilet urine. So this was the female punishment of women who resisted rape or tried escaping from the castle. So uh, the women, the female captive, they were kept in here. And the dungeons for the women were two. So just opposite, there is another dungeon. Each dungeon could hold a maximum of 200 women. 200 women. The women were also put in shackles. Uh, there was no electricity. The three men a source of light and ventilation. They had a window for extra light and air, but they were iron bars fixed there. And the conditions here were the same as that in the middle dining room. Toilet, urine, menstruation, all were done on the floor. The women were also eating twice a day, in the morning, in the evening. They eat from their palms. And they'll be here for two weeks to three months, waiting for the ships. Many women became sick and died. When no one died, the body carried out, thrown into the ocean. So the females were treated the same as the male captives. Uh, the door of no return. Originally, it was a small and narrow door. The captives had to go down, walk out. But the door was changed into this big one after the end of the trip. And the name is very symbolic. The captives taken out were all African. And they were taken away against their will. One, they were put into the ships. They lost contact with their families, their people, their lands. They were sent to the Americans, the Caribbeans, never to return back to Africa. The door of no return to symbolize that the Africans who were forced out of Africa as captives did not return back home. Uh, let us walk out. But we shall return back. <laughs> 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 when the captives are brought out, the soldiers will walk them down. At the beach, they are put into boats. The ships will be a bit far off the sea. So the boats take the captives, the big ships, before they are sent away. But now, you can see fishing boats. It is place more or less a mini fishing hub now, the local fishing. Uh, please take a quick turn around the door of return. Oh, ah. it was put in 1998. It is also symbolic. Uh, actually, we are inviting back the descendants of the captives. Oh. So, the African Americans, the Jamaicans, we are saying to them the ancestors were taken out of Africa never to return. But they, the descendants, can and should return back to Africa. This door is now a symbolic gateway back to Africa. The door of return. All right, so we are returning back to Africa. Okay. And one thing, you find a car back. Yeah. So there is a car back. Well. Okay, so the male condemned cell. 
So keep your head down. Okay, don't raise it up. Oh, it does. They don't leave this place. Oh, there we go. Lights go off. He's closing the door. <laughs> okay, so this is the, the comment. So, uh, during the slave trade, there were three doors or gates fixed by the entrance of the cell. The male captives were fighting, trying to organize their burials or escapes. They were brought in. And before a captive is brought in, he is beaten. He comes in very weak. Once in, the three doors are closed. No food, no water, no ventilation. The captive stays until he dies. So this was a dead chamber. When a captive is brought here, he only goes out dead. Wow. Because of the conditions, two days, that's how long Before. the captive will survive. Within two days, he dies of hunger, suffocation. We've been here for just about a minute, but I can see many of you are funny and so on. I wanted us to be here for like five minutes. <laughs> like here, it's it's just, enough now. <laughs> Hey, yeah, same old. Assemble. There's an original door. It's been there for for centuries. Wow. Yeah. Then it's the only original door still in existence. All the others have been changed. Mm -hmm. so what we are going to do next is we are walking up to see the governor's bedroom and hall. Okay. Yeah, I want you to see where the governor lives. That you can compare. Mm -hmm. All right, so when you take a look down, you can see an African market with a lot of shops. That was the barracks or the garrison. The British soldiers who worked here, they lived or stayed down there. The governor's very different. Let's see it now. Very breezy. Yeah. Nice wow. and cool. Feel the breeze. The governor lived or stayed here. Hello. The bedroom. And the governor even had a closet. So a wardrobe. And a closet or a wardrobe. Wardrobe. Yeah. Wardrobe. Yeah. yeah. So everything on this floor belonged to one man. <laughs> All right. In everlasting memory of the anguish of our ancestors, may those who died rest in peace, may those who return find their roots. May humanity never again perpetrate such injustice against humanity. We the living vow to uphold this. This was unveiled in 1992 by the National House of Chiefs, the traditional rulers in this country. And the chiefs are expressing their pain at what happened to the Africans in the dungeons, in the cells. And they are also admitting that some Africans were part of the trade. Mm. Unfortunately, these Africans were the leaders at that time. So the chiefs are pleading for forgiveness on behalf of their predecessors who took part in the slave trade. The message to you all, humanity, the living, is that you learn from what happened here. The dungeons are empty. The slave trade have long been abolished, but slavery is still happening. Mm. The child labor, human trafficking, racism and all that. So the message is that let us unite, continue to fight against modern slavery. If for no reason, for the simple reason that no one knows who the next victim of slavery will be. It could be you, a child, a friend, a relative, anybody else. So let's learn, unite, fight against modern slavery so as to make the world a better place for all of us. I also want to thank you for coming and thanks for listening, for your patience and I hope you learned a lot. Mm. Once again, my name is Kujo. 
Hills. The tour ends here. With us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And like I said, you can't beat the castle until six. If you stay beyond six, you might spend the night here. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to spend the night here. No, 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 no. Thank you.